right, if you are outside, you need to come inside. The service is beginning. this morning? Who's ready to worship this morning? Come on, let's get free. Hey!
Take a moment and tell God how good he is to us. So good. Mm. So good. Just to know that he doesn't change from day to day. That he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know? Like, I've seen his goodness and his faithfulness in your own experiences of your lives. So when I'm walking through my stuff, I know he's going to be there for me, too. And that has been such a comfort to me during this season of my life where it's felt like shifting sand. You know, it's been a bedrock for me to know that what you've walked through and how the Holy Spirit has comforted you is real for me, too. He's so good. He just doesn't change. And his mercies are new every morning. Man, more faithful than the morning sun. That's awesome. Holy Spirit, we invite you in, yeah. We invite you in, yeah. Oh, sing this with me. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can go. Shame is a Still 
same as
with the presence of God today? Who wants to have a personal meeting with the Holy Spirit today? Because he's in the room this morning. And he's in the room to meet with you personally. I don't want you to miss this moment. We just got a couple more minutes. I don't want you to miss it. But he's calling your name today. He knows your name and he's calling it out today. And he's saying, meet me right here. He wants to meet you at the cross of Christ today. And he's saying, come and meet me. But don't forget to bring your broken heart. Don't forget to bring your shame. Don't forget to bring your sin. Don't forget to bring all the times you've been wounded. He knows you. He knows everything that's ever happened to you. He knows everything you've ever done. He knows how weary you are from carrying these burdens and he says come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and I'm going to give you rest yeah. Yeah. Thank you, God. so when you meet with God today don't forget to bring that stuff and just lay it at his feet and don't pick it up when you go leave it there with Jesus leave it there with Jesus that's what the cross is all about. It's a meeting place. It's a meeting place for you and Jesus. And he's calling your name today. He's saying, bring all that stuff. Bring all that stuff to me and leave it here. I want to open these altars for just the next two minutes. And if you've got stuff, that you want to bring to Jesus. I want you to just bring it up here and lay it at his feet and leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. It's not yours anymore. You understand? The blood of Jesus washes away our sin and our guilt and our shame. So don't carry that stuff around with you. Because you're negating the power of the cross when you do that. You're taking away the effectiveness of the cross of Christ in your life when you walk around with these burdens, when you walk around with the shame and the guilt 
and your wounds. Bring your wounds to him. He's calling out your name. He's calling out your name. Oh, I want to leave it there. Oh, leave it there, leave it there. the Lord for his presence here today. Yes. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Somebody just say the name of Jesus today. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for forgiveness of sin. We thank you for mercy and grace. We thank you for new life. We thank you for new creation, God. We thank you for new mercies every morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on.
let's give a star hand clap to Jesus this morning. Yes, Lord. How many know that we serve a faithful God? That we serve a God that's always on time, that his timing is always perfect in all the things that he does. You know, my wife and I, were living witnesses to God's perfect timing. As you know, a lot of y'all know our story that uh, for the first two years of our marriage, we struggled to have uh, children and we went through many miscarriages and uh, uh, eventually, uh, uh, long story short, we felt led to to uh, start fostering and now we have a little, amazing little baby girl who just turned six months this week and she, she has turned our world amazing. But the testimony doesn't stop there, you see, because when you continue to press on and you continue to know that God's in control of everything, we begin to see that God's sovereignty, even though doctors say one thing, you see, doctors may be speaking something over your life right now, but I'm here to tell you that Jesus says something different. But it takes us to stand in faith and believe that his word is true. So I just want to just uh, uh, announce today that this Tuesday, my wife is 12 weeks pregnant. Even though the doctor said no, it's impossible that many things were, you, you see, we serve an impossible God. You see, my question for you this morning is, what is impossible for you seems right now, it's time for us to go and say, you know what, God, I'm going to cast it onto you because you are the all possible type of God that I serve. And I just want to continue to encourage everyone here to continue to give and continue to be faithful. And maybe right now you're struggling and, and you're saying like, but I can't, I don't know if I can give this and, and I don't know if I can be as faithful as I need to be. You see, you put God to the test and God will always come through. If you test them on these things, the Bible says he will pour the blessing upon you that you yourself cannot contain. We're living witnesses to God's provision. We're living witnesses to God's continual blessings. And even though you may not see it right now, I promise you that it's coming. But you need to stand firm and trust his word. So I just want to encourage you and I want to thank every, every single one of you to continue to give to this ministry. So that the, the, the message of the gospel not only is preached here in this community, but worldwide. So let's pray right now for our tithes and offering. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, for your blessings, God. We thank you for your provisions, Lord. Lord, I also thank you, Father, for the increase in my family, God. Lord, I thank you, God, because all things work together for the good, for those that love you, Jesus. And even though, Lord, that there are moments, Lord, that we do not understand situations, circumstances, and things that arise around us, God, we know that you're working something perfect, God, where you're going to get honor and you're going to get glory, God. Lord, I lift up, God, the businesses that are here, Lord, within this congregation, God. God. I lift up, God, every job that is here, Father. All those that are seeking employment, God, may they be, Lord, in places, God, where they're going to be life-giving, Father, where they're going to be around people, God, that are believers, and they're going to be strengthened, Lord, and that your glory, your kingdom will continue to be established, Lord, within this world, Lord. We thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said, God bless. Thank you for joining us here today at Fellowship of the Nations. Here's some things we have coming up. Baby Nation is once again hosting a date night for our parents, and it's this Friday, March the 24th, from 6 to 9.30 p.m. Cash donations will benefit Baby Nation Ministry, so sign up now. Also, our next baby dedication is April the 9th, so see Samantha Ryan to get signed up. Student Nation is holding their annual Disciple Now weekend. It's March 31st through April the 2nd, so students get signed up today for this powerful event. Also, there will be an important D-Now parent meeting on March the 30th in the sanctuary at 6 p.m., so see Pastor Stephanie for more details. We are excited to host Bill Katz from the Chosen People Ministry with a beautiful demonstration of the Messiah in Passover on April the 2nd. You do not want to miss it. Have you tried the new mobile text giving? It's safe and easy to give from your cell phone any time, night, or day. First, you text to the number 713-322-4609. That's 713-322-4609. A one-time registration is required. You enter the amount you want to donate, 
press send, and it's that easy to stay current on your ties. And we want to thank you for being obedient in this crucial area of giving so that you can be blessed and so that the many ministries of FOTN can reach the nations of the world and our own community. Now, everybody, go out and have a great week. Thank you for joining us. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, welcome to Fellowship of the Nations. So glad you're here this morning, and we just greet you in the name of Jesus. Uh, before we get started, we need to, uh, to, to do something, because when um, this past uh, January, we had, had finished our first uh, Nations Bible Institute, and we had about 40, 42 that graduated from it. But we also, before then, we worked with uh, Iron Man, and, uh, and we had some guys that graduated, and we had not yet given them their certificate. And so I just wanted to, uh, to honor them before we go any further. So if you guys are ready, I would like for uh, Pastor John Brady, is he in the house? Right there on the front row, baby. Come on, somebody. Come on up. As if you didn't know much about the Bible, we thought that you needed to go through Nations Bible Institute. But you're a great example to us, and so we wanted to give you this. Uh, certificate, one of the many that you have on your wall. Uh, also, did a... Uh, um, David Muskis, is David here this morning? Did David make it? All right, don't know. W. Gross is here. W. Gross right up there. Hey, buddy. Thank you, man. Proud of you. And then Mike Rhodes. Mike Rhodes is here. All right. Mike is uh, one of the leaders in our Iron Man ministry. And then we have a couple other guys. I didn't see Paul here as well. So anyway, these are just uh, three. We did not want to overlook them. But uh, I just want to get, just tell you, <coughs> excuse me, tell you a little bit about what God is doing in our Nations Bible Institute. We have started a new class. We have one that's... Uh, uh, started uh, this past month, and uh, we got a good group that's up there. And uh, we also have Nations Bible Institute Part Two, Two Hundred One, and uh, Pastor Rudy is uh, is doing that. And so, those that have graduated the first class, you need to be in that one. If you not got not not got connected yet, you need to do so. But I want to show you. We got a couple of things. What we do, if you're new here. Uh, Nations Bible Institute, what it is, it's, um, it's basically about 11 months to 12 months to go through it. It's about 25 chapters. You go through all the history of the Bible, a lot of different things, even learn some other religions, uh, those type of things. But 
it's a great in-depth study. We want to train up our, uh, our members. And so if you have not been connected yet, we want to do that. But right now, we have in Pakistan, our Nations Bible Institute Pakistan, we have 144 students. They're going to be graduating in October. Uh, we have had a number of classes that have already been graduated in India and, uh, and in Cambodia. So we're very excited about what God's doing there. And then we have uh, some new ones starting. And, uh, and I want to say thank you because uh, we have five classes, uh, new schools that are in India in the uh, West Bengal uh, state. So anyway, I want to send you, we got a couple of pictures, I believe. And uh, that's, that's one of the classes that they started right there. And then I think there's another class, and you see them right there. So that is, uh, and, and they started something different because all the other classes had just men, and we said we think the women need to be educated as well. And the women said, amen. <laughs> all right. And, uh, and I want to let you know that uh, we were able to send finances because of your faithful giving, and they have a school right now because of you. And so they bring Dr. Tom Johnson and, uh, and Finney John, the different ones that are working there, they wanted to give uh, a big thank you to you for making these schools possible. So give yourselves a hand, all right? And last but certainly not least, before we uh, get started in today, I wanted to... Uh, to say a praise the Lord for uh, what he is doing. Many of you know that we teach here every member is a minister. Every minister has a ministry. Some of those ministries become a nation. And uh, one of the nations that we have is Fighter Nation. And uh, we knock people out in the name of Jesus. And uh, then pray healing over. Okay. Anyway, but what's happening is there's a lot of young men who, uh, and women who are uh, being ministered to through uh, Termite Watkins and Beverly and different ones that are there. I see Justin back there. He's one of our professional boxers undefeated. Man, it's awesome. Proud of you, brother. Anyway, this, uh, this past week, the magazine is called Huge. It's, it's a magazine, and right on the cover of the magazine, Termite Watkins and Fighter Nation. So, anyway, so I just wanted you to know, when, uh, when we give God all the glory, he said, humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. And so we give all the glory to the Lord, but we are proud of what, what God is doing through this ministry. So, uh, Termite, that's not a bad picture. I don't, I don't know if they did any touch-up on it, but you're looking pretty good there, brother. I'm just saying. Anyway, no, we're proud of them. I think Cindy had some touch-up work. Anyway, no, it looks great. Well, anybody got the word? Man, has held it in the air like you really, really care. Say it together. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. It is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. I will hide His Word in my heart so that I might not sin against God. Holy Spirit, give me ears to hear and strength to obey. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Now, before you turn in your Bibles, let's give a big welcome to those who are our online congregation. Thank you for watching with us. We greet you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for watching. We have those that are uh, unable to come to church. They're uh, homebound, different ones. Then we have some in other states and, and, um, and even in different countries. So uh, the SEALs are watching today from Scotland, so we are excited about that. So anyway, glad you're here. We are in part seven it's one of our longest uh, series that we've ever done, but it will be uh, completing it next week. But part seven of our heroes, and what we're doing is, is we're taking just some people's lives who have experienced God, who have walked with God, and uh, we're kind of kind of looking at them in the grandstand, so to speak, and, and we're going to walk with them today, and we're going to have another person. Actually, we're taking a lady uh, out of the grandstand, and we're going to let her speak to us today. She is um, uh, a woman who had experienced God personally, and so we're going to learn from her and her experience. And so let's go to our, our first, um, uh, this is our, kind of our key verse for the whole series. It's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Let's look at and see what it says. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded, when it says therefore, just as a reminder, it takes from chapter 11 in Hebrews as the hall of faith. And in that particular chapter, we have all of these people that they listed because they had faith in God, God did some amazing 
changing things through them. And so we says, therefore, since we looked at those, we are surrounded by these great clouds of witnesses or our heroes, so to speak, when we look at, at their lives. And so they give us a message. So let us throw off everything that hinders. Now, every time I, I see this, and, and this is one of my first messages when I was young in the ministry, not even full time, but I had an opportunity to preach and I was playing basketball. And, uh, and I use this verse because it reminded me of when we were in college, I played four years of college basketball, and uh, our coach would take us, and this is old school, all right, but we would do, anybody remember ankle weights? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, you got this, like a sandbag with some straps on it, all right, so you put them on your ankles, then a weight vest, and we would have to run bleachers with these things on, and I'm thinking, man, this guy is, he is a drill sergeant, you know, he's trying to kill us, and we had to jump bench with these things, so man, we're doing this, but I'm telling you, man, we, even though it was painful, even though our legs were burning, but man, when you threw off those weights, you took them things off and said, okay, two lines, man, you were flying. All I'm saying is white boy could jump back then, man. I'm saying, you know, why? Because we let off, we threw off the things that so easily hindered us, right? And, and that's, what the, that's what the Bible's saying here. That's what these guys are saying. Man, get rid of the things that are weighing you down. You know, God wants you to roll. Let's see the Scripture again if we can, and let's finish it. It says, so since we're uh, surrounded by these witnesses, these people who've been there, they're watching you, they're encouraging us today, they, they're rooting us on, they say, man, you can do it, no matter what you're going through, throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run, and this is our word for the day, with perseverance, the race marked out for us. Perseverance, it's patient endurance. And so what God's saying is, you just keep running. Keep running. You know, you say, yeah, but you don't understand. Man, I lost my job. Or whatever. Keep running. Yeah, but you don't understand. Man, my marriage is in trouble. Keep running. You know, I mean, I had some uh, horrible things happen. or We've had death in the family, whatever. God says, keep running the race that I set before you. Okay, so we want to keep running this race. Today we are taking out of the grandstands a lady, and her name is Sarah. Anybody remember Sarah. Sarah, she's uh, the, uh, the wife of Abraham, all right? We were talking in uh, our MBI class this morning, and uh, when you look at what Abraham did and what God did through Abraham, he said, I'm going to birth a nation, and the reason why he birthed the nation of Israel is because he wanted to bring the Savior through there, all right? He wanted to bring, you know, uh, Jesus through that lineage, through that nation. He's not somebody who just popped up and, you know, he's from Czechoslovakia and we don't know anything about him. We know everything about Jesus because in the Old Testament, we have over 300 prophecies about Jesus. We see the lineage of Jesus. When you look at Matthew, you can start with Abraham and go all the way through, and you see all the people, all of his grandparents and great, 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 great grandparents. You see it all through this Abraham and Sarah, all right? But it sounds like it's easy. Hey, I want to birth a nation through you. Well, sometimes we see that's uh, not as easy as we see. So in Genesis, we pick up the, uh, the Scripture. It's in Genesis 15. It says this, And after this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. He says, Do not be afraid. Now here's usually what happens whenever there is an encounter with God or the angel of the Lord or the vision or whatever. It is so amazing. And you see it almost every single time. It's so amazing that they have to say, don't be afraid. All right? <laughs> I know you want to pass. You know, I love it when Daniel, when he saw the angel of the Lord, he just collapsed. All right? He just, he says, my legs went weak. I'm, I'm out. All right? So he says, here again, he says, so he sees him in a vision. Do not be afraid. I am your shield and your very great reward. Now, at this particular time, he had no kids. And so Abraham, he, he's, he's looking, he says, look, you may be my reward, but look what he says. Abram said, oh, sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit my estate is Eleazar of Damascus? In other words, what good does it say to me, hey, I'm your rewarder when all this stuff's going to be left to my servant? I don't have any kids. He asked a legitimate question. You know, he's bringing it back to the Lord. Wait a minute, you're giving a promise, but, you know, yeah, you're the rewarder. So he, he says this. He says, and, and he says, you have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Keep going. It says, then the word of the Lord came to him, this man, talking about his servant, this man will not be your heir, 
But here comes this promise. But a son coming from your own body will be your heir. And he took him outside and he said, look up at the heavens and count the stars. In other words, he's saying, hey, here's your family tree. You know what your family tree is going to look like? It's not just one little tree. Take a look at this. That's going to be your family tree. You think I'm going to do something small? No, I'm going to do something incredible in your life. So he's giving him this promise. Then he even says, look at the heavens and count the stars, which if you were in the series in January, you see that in the book of Jeremiah, it says you can't even count the stars. And so that's why he says, if indeed you can count them. You can't. There's too many. All right, the bigger the telescope, the more stars they're finding. So it's just impossible. There's too many of them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. This was a promise that God gave to Abraham. All right, well, there's got to be a woman. And this is where Sarah gets involved. So let's look. So the promise of them, here's the problem. He gave the promise, but he didn't fulfill it until 25 years later. It's like, whoa, hang on a minute. God, you spoke something in my life, but why in the world am I having to wait? Does anybody like to wait? No. Does anybody like traffic? No. <laughs> no. Sometimes you get aggravated at the microwave. You know, <laughs> come on, hurry. I get a meal in a minute. I want it in 40 seconds. You know, we're so impatient, especially this generation. We want everything right now. You know, you got your smartphone, so what, you can Google anything. Right? Instant information. Well, if that was the case back then, she really would be stressed out. That's why this message is for us. So here it is. So here it is. It's past. And during this time, it's during their childbearing uh, ability. Right? Hey, I'm going to give you a promise. He said, man, no, no problem, man. I'm ready. You know? Well, what he did was he waited until it was beyond their ability to make it happen. You with me? Sometimes God will give you a word, but he's going to wait because he, don't, he wants to make sure that you're in a position where the only way you can happen is through him. That way he gets all the glory. Amen? A lot of times we, we, we see that we have some problems. So God takes him outside. He looks, looks up at the stars. Here's a note as we start this. For when you can't understand God and impatience threatens to overwhelm you, don't complicate God's promise with your solution. All right? Don't complicate. That should be a note. Do we not have that note? Okay. Well, this is it. For when you can't understand God and impatience threatens to overwhelm you, don't complicate God's promise with your solution. We, can, we have a tendency that we want to get ahead of God. Wait a minute. God spoke. It's not working, so let me figure it out. So this is what you're going to see. All right? Aren't you glad that the person that you may have fell in love with at 15 and you go, oh, man, I hope, Jesus, please let me marry them, you know, and that didn't happen and you got mad at God, and then you see them 30 years later and you go, oh, thank God I didn't marry them. <laughs> come on, come on, somebody. Anybody know what I'm talking about? All right. Sometimes God is trying to protect you, all right? You get mad at him because he doesn't, he doesn't answer that prayer. He says, nah, you don't know what that's going to be like. <laughs> yeah, trust me. So here we go. This is the message, and this is what Sarah is saying to us today. She's saying, trust God, and she's going to give us three, in three areas that she's going to trust God, and then she's going to give three encouraging words to us, all right? So this is the message. Trust God even if it takes a long time. Trust God even if it takes a long time because usually it will. Usually it will, all right? I, uh, did you ever, ever hear that joke about the man who came up to God and he said, God, hey, I just want you to know, what's a million years like to you? And God said, well, it's, it's like a second. He said, well, what's a million dollars like to you? He said, well, it's, it's like a penny. And he said, well, uh, can I have one of those pennies? And God said, yeah, in just a second. All right. All right. I need you, Don. I needed you right there. All right. Here we go. Struggling up here. So here's, here's what happens. In Genesis 16, you see, now Sarai, and let's look at it. This is what their names were before they had this, this encounter with God. Because when you look at it, God adds an A-H, all right? Sarah, Abraham, adds an A-H, and that is, and it's a picture of God in you or God working in you. Okay, so when God began to work in them and they allowed him to, he changed their name. But right here, now Sarah, Abraham's wife, she had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian maidservant named Hagar. So she said to Abram, 
The Lord has kept me from having children. Is that true? Well, not necessarily because he gave her promises. She's going to have a child. So look at her solution. How many wives would do this right here? Uh, go, go sleep with my maidservant. Perhaps I can build a family through her. I love the Bible. I just love it. It just puts it out there. I would love, and in my mind, I try to picture myself, and I'm, I'm, I'm seeing Abraham going. I mean, if you really want me to. I mean, she's kind of, are you sure? You really thought this through? All right. I mean, if I have to. I'm just thinking, how many husbands are here going, man, where's the God of Abraham? No, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. All right, here we go. So here's what happened. Abraham, Abram, he agreed, if you really want me to, he agreed with what Sarah said, all right? Sounded like a great solution, right? But here's what happened. He did go in, and he, had, he laid with her, and she conceived, and she had a son. All right, and then it was Hagar he had, had a son named Ishmael. Here's the problem with that. Some of our own solutions can cause chaos later on. Are you with me? Because here, here, was, here was the chaos. The chaos was Ishmael became the father of the Arab nations, and even until today, they have always battled. You see, the enemies of Israel today, they're the enemies that are, a lot of them are from the Arab nations all right, and so what seemed like a great idea here became a very painful situation, not only back then, later, that they had to battle them, but you find it even today. So her solution to the problem created a lot of a chaos, all right? So sometimes we, we just have to get to the point and just pray simple prayers, all right? When we get in situations, what God is trying to say to us is, says, look, the timing may not be right or here's something. You know what? I pray a simple prayer, and this is it. God, open a door no man can shut, or shut a door no man can open. It's amazing. That simple prayer has probably protected us in so many different ways. Even decisions about the church, even decisions about selling property, any of that stuff, we just say, God, if this is your will, open a door no man can shut and shut a door no man can open. So we see that. Here's, here's the second thing. Um, trust God even if it seems ridiculous. Sarah is saying, I've learned since I've gone through this process, I waited 25 years, I tried to have my own solution, and it got us in a mess. So now I'm telling you guys here at Fellowship of the Nations that it may seem like it's going to be a long time. The other part of it is it may sound ridiculous. Anybody ever been there? God give you a word, and you're thinking, man, that doesn't sound like it's really true, <laughs> you know. And the Bible is full of stories like that. Full of stories. Look, look at Joshua. His first battle was against Jericho. He goes, okay, we're ready. God, what do you want us to do? March around the city. Are we going to fight? No. You're just going to march around, and you're going to go back. Sound ridiculous, didn't it? All right. So what do you do? Six days, boom. On the seventh day, what do we do now, God? March seven times around it. <laughs> really? Yeah. And then what do you do? Shout and blow a trumpet. Sound ridiculous. Look at Gideon when they went to, went to battle. What did they do? Same thing. It's the same thing. What do I, what do I want? I'm, you know, he whittled an army down to 300. It sounded ridiculous. Do they, are they ready to fight? No. What I want you to do is I want you to blow a trumpet. I want you to take a clay pot and crack it and then start shouting. It sounded crazy, didn't it? Sometimes God may be telling you something, and on the surface it may sound ridiculous, but God is always at work. Amen? Amen. So look, and here it sounds ridiculous. All right? That's, now, let me say this. This is a part of God that you need to, as a follower of Christ, you need to get comfortable with this. You really do. Sometimes you just say, mm, I don't know about that. No, it may sound crazy. All right? When we came and bought this this right here, these facilities right here, it sounded crazy, you know, because we already had 120 acres out there. We had all of our plans. We had our permits. We were getting ready to roll with it, and God said, go buy these facilities. Uh, but you don't understand. Five mornings in a row, four o'clock, God wakes me up, 
boom, boom, boom. I look over, 4 o'clock, next morning, 4 o'clock, and I just go in, and God says, go by this facility. It doesn't make any sense to me, but it makes a whole lot of sense now because we got a gym, and we wouldn't have fighter nation. we got another area over here, so we have Spanish nation. God knows a whole lot better than we do, okay? You know, and what I had to do was die of my ego, my plans, and everything else and say, thy will be done. All right, does that make sense? Somewhere in your life, you may be battling with this same thing. It may seem ridiculous, all right? Man's wisdom is foolishness in the sight of God, so God use, uses what we see as foolishness to confound the wise. Do you get that? I mean, he, it, that sounds foolish, but God will use something as crazy as, as Jesus going to Peter and saying, hey, we owe some taxes, go fish. And when you fish, you're going to catch a fish, open up his mouth, there's going to be a coin in that fish, and then go pay taxes. How many of you go, I got my pole, let's go. You know they're going to the other guys going, did you hear what he told me? <laughs> right? There may be, when you're walking in ministry, God may be telling you something that sounds ridiculous, but here it is, all right? Let me say this. Be careful that you don't get uncomfortable with the absurd. Be careful that you don't get uncomfortable with the absurd. That sounds absurd to me. Let me tell you, as some of you who are new Christians, all right, I'll, I'll give you just, just several examples. Worship, that seems absurd to me. They're raising their hands. They're, they're raising their hands. Some guys are shouting in here. That's crazy. Do you hear them, God? They're shouting. That's weird. No, what does the Bible say? Go into the sanctuary, lift in holy hands. All right, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with the voice of trial. Does that sound absurd to you? Huh? To some who've been worshiping for a long time, that's just part of your lifestyle. But for those who are, are new in the faith, that just seems kind of crazy. All right, let me give you another one. You come into church and you get saved and all of a sudden you hear some guy and Pastor Rudy's come up here and he says, God says if you want to be obedient, give a tithe and a tithe is 10% of your income. That's absurd. Oh, I don't think so. See, sometimes God just comes along and he says things and we're not getting it. That doesn't make any sense, but he comes back. He never tells us anything that he doesn't follow it up with a promise. All right? He always comes back with a blessing on it. You know, look, read Malachi. This is what we're trying to tell you. If you will give, he said, I will bless you. I mean, I will pour out. I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessing upon you. And sometimes we just don't get it. It's absurd. This is why when the Lord says, this is the, thus saith the Lord, let's just say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And this is, this is what was happening. So we see in Genesis 18, here's the story. It's, it's unfolding. That's right. Then the Lord said, I will surely return to you this time next year. Now it's 24 years, right? Got another year tacked on, on that. That's 25 years. And now, women, this message you can relate to more than me. All right, but this next section, you're going to see what I'm talking about. So, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Here's the picture. Abraham was 100 years old, and Sarah is 90. 90. 90. 90. Are you with me? She's going to have a baby. Does that sound ridiculous to you? Okay, make sure. Now, Sarah was listening. She maybe had the same response as you. She was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Here's Abraham. He's encountering here from God behind there. And Abraham and Sarah were already old and well advanced in years, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. Would you agree with that? So what did Sarah do? She laughed. What? She laughed to herself as she thought, after I am and I think this is just TMI right here, but just go ahead. I love the Bible. After I am worn out and my master is old, will I now have this pleasure? It said it right there. Then said the Lord to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? This is a scripture. This part right here is where we need to hang on. All right? 
No matter what you're facing right now, God has given you this right here. Let's say it together. Is anything too hard for the Lord? You ready? Say it together. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Some of you, you need to write it down right now. Because what you're going through right now, you're looking for a job, you're trying to, you've been faithful in your ties, you need some bills to pay, there may be something going on in your life, and God is saying, is anything too hard for me? Who are you looking to, to meet this need? All right? He said, I'll return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. And that's exactly what happened. It's, I, I love it. So, there they are. But what happened is Sarah's laughter offended God. And sometimes our reaction to what God is saying to us, our lack of faith, our doubts, can be offensive to God. He's saying, I can do this. <laughs> really? Is anything too hard for the Lord? No. So let's move on. All right, here's the third thing. Trust God even if those around you don't. Even if those around you don't, all right? The devil's going to make sure that he's going to put plenty of naysayers around you. We're living in a day where, where there is a screen. I saw a, an interview yesterday, an interview of a guy, and, and he wrote this book, and, and it's about the fact that the average American spends nine and a half hours looking at a screen. You're either looking at your phone, your iPad, your computer, your television, nine and a half hours a day that you average and there's a lot of voices that are coming through those screen, screens that are naysayers. There's voices that say, no, you can't do that, or God's not real, or it's not scientifically proven, you know, or, or the Bible is an old book, you know, don't believe in it. Don't think about faith, just ask for facts. All of these voices are coming at you, and God's telling you something. It may sound ridiculous at, the, at this first, but you got all these naysayers coming at you. And you got to stick with the Word of God. And so that we, we see that. Sarah had voices around her saying, man, you can't have a baby at 90. Who did you hear that from? God. Really? I mean, come on. If God just told you and you were 90 years old, say, hey, next year I'm going to have a baby. How many women would go, no problem? No. That's a big thing, Right? 90 years old, so here we go. Look at Genesis 21, 67. This thing's still playing out. <laughs> Sarah said, God has brought me laughter. Christine, is God bringing you laughter? Had a lot of tears, didn't you? But God, but God. And everyone who hears about this, they're going to laugh not at me, with me. They're going to laugh with me. Why? Because it's going to be amazing what God's done. God's going to do something that's just going to blow us away. 90 years old. All right, and she added this. Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? 90 years old. Yet I have borne him a son in this old age. In other words, what God said to me, it sounded ridiculous. I had to wait a long time. There was a lot of people that said it wasn't going to happen, but it happened. And it's the time of rejoicing. All right, so look at the three things that, that Sarah's going to give. These are the words of encouragement, all right? And what I like about Sarah, she spends probably the most of her life doubting what God's going to do. She laughed about it, even up to, you know, her being 90 years, years of age, all right? And, and they come along. God says, hey, next time... The, the, this time next year, you're going to have a baby. And what, what does he do? She laughs. But we see here in Hebrews 11, she's in the hall of faith. Look at this, Hebrews 11, 11. It says this, and by faith, even Sarah. And this should make you feel good. All right? Because you say, yeah, but you know, I hadn't been a Christian long. I really hadn't been a person of faith. Even at her age at 90 years old, she came to the point where I believe. God is saying, don't look at what you haven't done in your past. Look at where you are right now and make a decision to say, I'm going to believe God. Nothing is too hard for him. I'm ready for him to do a work in my life. So it says, and by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children. Look why. Because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. Get your eyes focused on the Lord. So this is the first word of encouragement. This is what she says. Don't try to get ahead of God when he isn't moving fast enough for you. I want you to leave it up there. 
Don't try to get ahead of God when he isn't moving fast enough for you. A lot of times we want things to happen too quick, all right? And this is, this is the truth. God is doing something in us. You have to wait, all right? When I moved and in, married into this family over here, they were, you know, I'm meat and potatoes. No, they're rice, and their Cajun food and all that and gumbo. And uh, when Lisa, she makes her own roux. I don't know, some people cheat and buy that store-bought stuff. No, she makes her own roux. Well, that takes time. And I'd watch her and say, man, why is that taking so long? I mean, it's, it's eat, you know. You know, it's a process, you know. And she would, she would, you know, work it and, you know, get it the right texture. You didn't burn it. You didn't get it to it. It had to be the right color of roux. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Some of you Cajun folks, yeah. Oh, come on, somebody. Anyway, you get it, then you can begin the process, and it's going to taste amazing, right? But you have to get that right process. This is what the Bible says about the refiner's fire. He says when you take silver and you put it under a fire, it begins to boil. All the impurities begin to come up. When we're in the process, listen to me, when you're in the process of waiting, God, why are you taking so long? You know what he's doing? He's bringing the impurities in our life up, so he scrapes off the dross. He scrapes off the impurities. He scrapes off the sin that so easily entangles. He scrapes off those things that are hindering you. Why? Because he's getting ready. You know what? You know when it's ready? When the refiner can look into the silver and he sees his face. When God can look at you and you've gone through the process and he's seeing his face in you. Now they're ready. Why? Because ministry is not about us. It's about him. This church is not about Johnny Brady. This church is about Jesus Christ only, only. No matter what ministries we have, even though they put termites' face on the, on the, on the front of a cover, they should see Jesus Christ right there. Amen? And that's a pretty good picture of Jesus, I got to say. All right. Why? Because the ministry is not about termites. Any of the ministries around here, it's all about Jesus, right? <laughs> so, this is when you, when you get in a situation where it's, it seems slow, 2 Peter 3, 3 9 says this The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. As some understand slowness, he is patient. Maybe you started a care group. I only got three coming. Don't worry. Those three that you're working with, that's what God's doing. He's ministering to you. Some of you think you're ready for a certain job or ministry, whatever. It's a process. We've got to get the ego out of it. Amen? All right. Psalm 37, 7 says, be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Don't. I'm, I'm going to give you just, just a little, just, just something to help you. <clears throat> when you feel yourself anxious, and it's easy to do. I mean, you're in traffic, you got business, you got reports to do. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day, got reports, got things, I got to, you know, it's just so busy, so busy, so busy. When you feel that anxiety, take 10 minutes. Just take 10 minutes. You know what I've started doing? There's, there's a, an app I, I gave you, it's called First 15, the letter first, F I R S T, first, and then the number 15, just First 15. Because we talked about in January, starting your day off, 15 minutes, five of worship, five of reading the Bible, five of prayer. Start your day off, 15 minutes. But in that app, it has music. You go in the middle of it. You can just push that little button, and you get some music. I, I listened to it this morning. Just some time with the Lord. When you begin to worship, and you begin to let that sink in, you'll see God's got it. He's got it. It gets your attention off circumstances, and it puts your attention and your focus on him. Just take a few minutes. You can get impatient. Oh, I can't believe it's taking so long. Don't let it complicate your life, all right? Worry and don't worry about other people. Does that make sense? I got a four, four amens. Let me tell you, this week, you want, there's going to be some stressful situations that you're going to go through. You're going to have to take about 10 minutes with God, find some time, grab your phone, if that's the, what you want to use, hit that button and just listen to a worship song. And you will be amazed at the presence of God, just what we had a while, while ago. 
What will happen in your life, all right? I'm trying to help you, trying to be practical, okay? It's going to bring peace into your soul. I'm not going to be worried about it anymore. Here's the second thing Sarah says. When you must wait, focus on what's happening in you, not what's happening to you. God is at work. A lot of times we, man, I can't believe I hadn't got that job yet. Man, I can't believe this hadn't worked. Man, I can't believe. God is working in you. You have to grab a hold of that truth. When something's happening to you, you can be assured that God wants to do something in you. Anybody had a rough situation in the last couple of weeks? All right. You know what I'm talking about? Rough. You know what? God allows it so that he can do something inside of you. And that's when you take a time to say, what is it? And be still before him and see what he says, all right? You, got, you go to God. Here's, here's what happens. We go to God, and we want, we want God to fix it. And we'll say, okay, God, here's my problem. I want you to fix it right now, all right? Got to have it right, right now. And he says, well, I'll fix it, but let's learn something in the process. No, I don't think so. I don't want to learn anything. I just want you to fix my problem. Yeah, but there's some things inside of you. I want to strengthen your faith, and I want to, I want to develop our relationship more so that we have a better communication. Lord, you don't understand. I want you to fix my problem, and it's okay with me if I go to heaven dumber than a stump. All right? You know, just fix it, and let's go on with it. God's saying, I want to do something bigger and better in you. All right? You grabbing a hold of that? If you don't get anything else, grab this one, okay? All right. It, it, it's like this. If you, go, if you go to your kid's room and you wake him up for, for school, and they go, ah, oh, Daddy, I don't want to go to school this morning. You go, no problem. Sleep in. Maybe tomorrow we'll go. You know, if you get enough rest, we'll go tomorrow. Anybody say that? No. No. You may tell them that on Sunday morning. <laughs> what? preaching now. Here we go. What God is saying, what God is saying, I want to do something in you, all right? You may have to create some pain in the present to help them in their future. Does that make sense? Uh, if they say, oh, I don't feel like I'm going to school today, you're going to get yourself out of that bed right now, you know. We had a roux stir, you know, because she made roux. She had her big spoon about like that, and that's what she'd stir it up. We called it the rooster, you know, and all I had to tell them boys said, hey, you don't do what I say, we got the rooster. Ro rooster's coming after you. It's amazing how quick they could get up out of that bed, I'm just saying. All right, Romans 8, 24 and 25, this is what it is. We're almost through. That is why waiting does not diminish us. Any more than waiting diminishes a pregnant mother. Hmm. Great application for today, isn't it? We are enlarged in the waiting spiritually, all right? We, of course, don't see what is enlarging us. But the longer we wait, the larger we become and the more joyful our expectancy. Isn't that amazing? God's saying, I'm doing something in you. And one of the things that, that I... I dealt with whenever this time you're going to ask Lisa, I just kept telling her, wrestle with the Lord, I was starting a church, and are you sure, and I want to get your will, and thy will be done, that whole thing. And I just told her, I said, man, I feel like I'm pregnant with this vision. It just kept getting larger and larger and larger. It's like, I think it's time that we have this baby, all right? <laughs> and we gave birth, and here's the children. Here we go. <laughs> James 1, 7, I mean, 1, 2 through 4, he says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers. And here's where we see maturity. Consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith develops, and here's the word we started with, perseverance. Perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you, right here this morning, may be what? Mature and complete, not lacking anything. God wants his children to grow up. God wants his children to not be straddled with the same sins that you were fighting 10 years ago. The same things that the enemy used 10 years ago to defeat you or depress you or whatever. God's saying, I'm trying to do a work in your life. And he's saying, grow up. I'm here. I'm daddy. I got you. And I want you to grow up. It's going to take a process. There's some things that we need to talk about, some things we need to get rid of, but I am going to help you in this process. He never leaves us. He'll never forsake us. So he's committed to it. And here's the last thing Sarah tells us. 
Even our very best cannot possibly compare to anything God has in mind. Our very best. If we think we know better than God, we don't. And what he's saying is, I want to do something in your life that is far better. And the Apostle Paul put it this way, exceedingly abundantly above or beyond anything we can even imagine. God's saying, that's what I want to do in your life. Isaiah 64, 4 is what he says. Since before time, no one has ever imagined, no ear heard, nor I seen a God like, like you who works for those who what? Say the word? Wait. Who wait for him. Who wait. And that's what God is doing. God is something better. When we look at Sarah's life, man, she went through it. God gave a promise 25 years Old, 90 years old, 91 when the baby was born. You're thinking, good night, why? Because God wanted to do a work in her life, strengthen her faith, because she was going to have that baby right at her knee. She was going to be the one teaching. She was going to be the one who's, who's telling him, hey, you're a promise of God. You're a promise of God. I didn't think it for a while, but you know what? Look what God did. Abraham had to tell him, even when he was going to take him on the mountain and God said sacrifice him, he was already ready. Daddy, whatever you want to do, you want to go sacrifice? Let's go sacrifice. Laid him on the altar. What faith. God had already prepared them as parents, even though they were 190. He prepared them as parents to do something. Why? He took them through the process. God's taking you through the process because he is trying to help you be a better parent, be a better spouse, be a better follower of Christ. He don't want to leave you where you are right now. We are on a journey, and that journey is steps up. You with me? That's what he's doing. He's developing. He's not looking for someone who's just going to come to church every once in a while. He's looking for followers of Jesus, those of faith growing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Sarah blessed us today. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Right now, many of you may be struggling with something that you just can't believe that God has taken so long to answer our prayer. I want to thank you so much for being a part of our online streaming. I hope you really enjoyed the message today. And I want you to just take it to heart. Whatever the Lord has spoken to you, just take it to heart. And, and I pray that if you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that today would be that day. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. So that's what we're praying for you. And if you're wondering, how do I get to know Jesus as my Lord and Savior? Well, let me tell you, it's pretty simple. First of all, Jesus loves you more than anybody on this planet. So let me tell you, he's wanting you to know him. So as you come to him, we recognize, one, that we've sinned against God. Everybody has. The Bible says that all have sinned. We've fallen short of the glory of God. Well, we recognize that one. We don't have to be told that. We know that. The second thing is, it says that God demonstrated his love for us, and that's you. God loves you even though that we were sinners. That's how much he cares for you. So you got to get it out of the way. He's not judging you. He already sent his son to die in our place so that we could have all of our sin placed upon him. And then we believe we had faith in him that that's what he did. And he did it because he loved us. The Bible says the wages of our sin is death. Well, Jesus took our death sentence for us. But then it doesn't leave it as a negative. It says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus. It's not works. It's not a a church membership somewhere. It's not giving money to somebody. All of those are good things, but this not, does not bring salvation. So now, how do you get there? It's only in Jesus. So simply just open your heart and say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart. Save me. Forgive me. I want to turn away from all the stupid stuff that I'm doing. And I want to turn to you. I want you to be my Lord, my Savior, the boss of my life. And Jesus, come in and save me. I want to love you. I want to live for you. I want to obey your word all the days of my life. And that's what you can do. Pray that prayer right now. And I'll tell you, Jesus is waiting. And the moment, the instant you do that, you will be saved. And my encouragement to you, find a great Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. Get connected. Now, if you're in the Houston area, man, we would love to have you at Fellowship of the Nations. But you're in different parts of the country or even around the world. Find somewhere that they're preaching Jesus, and I promise you it will change your life. Hope you can join us again next week, and uh, up until then, we'll be praying for you. Pray for us. We'd love to hear from you. Just go on our website, FOTN.org, Fellowship of the Nations, and let us hear from you. God bless you.